What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpCentrals.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So a while back I got an email from someone asking for some tips on how to model to keep your file size down inside of SketchUp. And so as a lot of you know, um, sometimes when you add a whole bunch of faces or heavy materials or some other things, your file size gets kind of unmanageable in SketchUp. Well, I'm going to talk through some tips today on how you can keep that file size down. So if you're looking for more tips to take your SketchUp modeling game to the next level, make sure to check out my free SketchUp modeling tips guide where I give you 10 of my top tips for saving time modeling in SketchUp. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. And let's go ahead and just jump into it. So obviously when you're modeling inside of SketchUp and you're trying to reduce model size or model so that your model's not going to be super big, the easiest way to do that is just to have less stuff in there. And so one way to have less stuff in your model and to use less edges and faces is to have kind of an understanding of the way that uh, all the edges and faces work inside of SketchUp. And so let's start off by drawing a circle. I'm going to tap the C key in order to do that. Well, if you remember when you first activate the circle tool, you can type in a number of sides and hit the enter key. So like for example, I could type in a value of 8 and then draw my circle and that's going to come in as an octagon. If I type in the C key and then I type in 12, that's going to draw a 12 sided circle. And then if I type in 24, it's going to draw a 24 sided circle. So you can see how when you look at these circles, each one of these has a certain number of edges contained in it. And so what that means is within those edges um, that are being displayed, um, the the circle that has 24 sides is going to have more geometry in it than the circle that has 8 sides. And so that's just a very basic look at this. Well, what happens is once you take these smoother objects, so the objects with more, uh, with more edges in them, um, and you extrude them, what happens is you start creating a lot of faces. So I'll draw another circle over here that's going to be 36 sides. Well, if I take each one of these and I push pull them up, using the push-pull tool, you can see how at a certain point you stop being able to see the individual edges in these cylinders and they all kind of look the same unless you look at their hidden geometry. Well, if I look at my hidden geometry, you can see how each one of these has progressively more sides in it. And so when you're drawing something simple like four cylinders, it doesn't really matter um, because there's just not that much geometry in here. If I triple click on this, for example, this tells me I have 34 entities. Um, that's including all the edges and faces. But if you look at this one on the right, and I do the same thing, I have 146 entities. Well, what starts happening is the more stuff that you include in your model like this, the slower your model's going to go. So if you can model in here by finding that kind of balance between using a lot of edges and having kind of smooth, smooth enough faces that you can't tell the difference, you can really kind of start managing the size of your models. And so tip one is using less edges and faces when you're modeling things like that. And tip two kind of kind of goes along with that. And so what that means is a lot of the time when you're modeling inside of SketchUp, you want to bevel off edges or create curves or things like that. So let's say I create something over here that looks kind of like a countertop. Well, a lot of the time what you want to do when you bevel and create curves like this is you want to come in here with an arc, you want to use the follow me tool and then you want to activate that follow me tool in order to bevel off that curve right there. Well the problem is when I zoom out and we've created a curve like this, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter how many edges are in this curve when you remove this material. Um, all you really want is you just want the look in here of this edge being kind of beveled off or curved off. And so if I look at this and I go to my hidden geometry, you can see how this has a whole bunch of edges and faces in here when we do this with this curve. Well, we can achieve the same effect by just coming in here and just drawing a single line across this edge and then using the follow me tool to remove the material here. And so you can see how if I was to triple click on this object, it has 110 entities in it. 
and if I triple click across this object this only has 33 entities and so this really adds up when you start doing things like extruding um, curves and things like that. So another quick example, because I don't want to spend too much time on this, but let's say you had a circle and you wanted to extrude a tube along it. So let's say we had a pair of circles actually. So if I drew a circle along this edge right here and I reduce the number of sides to maybe something like 12 and hit the enter key, and I drew a circle right here, and then I use the follow me tool to extrude along that circle, you can see how that gives me this nice ring shape that looks pretty smooth. Well, if I was to come over here and do the exact same thing, but we were to draw this with a 36 sided circle over here, and then use the follow me tool to extrude this, you can see how these look pretty similar, right? I mean, like in general, they're kind of the same level of detail. I'm gonna reverse these faces real quick. However, if we were to turn the hidden geometry on, you can see how this object is much more heavy weight than this object. So trying to, like this one has uh, almost 1300 entities, this one has almost 4000. So you can see how by quickly reducing the number of edges in something that you're extruding, you can reduce the size of what's being created in your model. So tip three really has a lot to do with being smart about the models that you download from the 3D warehouse. So if I go into the 3D warehouse, what you're gonna find what you're gonna find is all of the models in the 3D warehouse have a certain size. And so probably the best way to demonstrate this would be to download some trees. And so let's just type in here and let's just look for trees. And then within trees, usually I like to sort by popularity um, because generally people kind of find the trees that they like and those are the ones that get downloaded the most. And so if we go in here and we look at a tree like, uh, let's say this one right here, this 3D tree, you can see how this tree has has, is three megabytes in size and it has almost 11,000 polygons in it. It's not a super heavy tree, but it's still kind of a heavy tree where if you were to download this and bring a bunch of these into your model, it's gonna run really slowly. And so what you can do, once you understand where to look for the size of these uh, models, what you can do is inside of your search, you can actually filter this by using the file size filter. And you can filter this down so that you only look at files of a certain size. So you can see how I can use this to minimize the size of the trees that I'm bringing in. So like for example, I could find this tree right here, which is 364 kilobytes and bring that into my model and just drop that right here. Now you do obviously have to be careful because this has a certain style associated with it where all of these, all of these leaves, and hopefully these are modeled as components, it looks like they are. You could hide the edges on these. Um, because these are in here as um, individual planes and images and things like that. But you can really reduce the size of your model by only using smaller 3D warehouse models. On the other hand, if you were to come in here and do a search for a tree, and we'll sort this the other size and we'll only look at models that are nine megabytes or above, So like this tree right here, this is 11 megabytes, which is fine if you only need one tree in here. Um, you can see how this has 10,000 polygons in it, but you can see how it takes a lot longer to load. And once you bring this into your model, it's gonna make your model run fairly slow because this is a large file and SketchUp's gonna struggle to render it. So you can see how if we place this, And so maybe what we do with this kind of tree is we'd come in here and we'd turn off profiles. That way we don't see those extra edges in here. But you can see how this tree, which is an 11 megabyte tree, um, looks very similar to this tree over here, which is more like a three megabyte tree. So by being smart about the models that you put in here from the 3D warehouse, you can really reduce the size of your SketchUp model. So the next thing I want to talk about is being smart about your level of detail. Because again, one of the easiest things to do to minimize your file size in SketchUp is to have less stuff inside of it. And so what I mean by that is I mean when you're creating a floor plan, like let's say that we have a floor plan like this one, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this tree for right now. But let's say, we'll make a copy of this using the move tool. But let's say that we were to model out 
let's say that we were to model out a wall on this floor plan. Well, there's a couple different ways we could do this. We could create a wall right here, or, and I'm gonna use a extension in order to do this quickly. We could also come around the perimeter of this, and I'm gonna use the extension profile builder just for the sake of speed. And we could bring in a wall around the perimeter that contains all of the studs and extra sheathing. So this wall is dimensionally about the same as this one, but this one has a lot of extra stuff in it, right? So if you look at this wall, it's got a layer of jip board on the outside. It's got a layer of plywood. It's got wood framing. If I come in here and I hide this layer right here, and then it's got um, a layer of jip board on the inside. Well, all of that just kind of leads to your model having more stuff in here, like more geometry, more extra stuff. And when it comes down to it, unless you're showing the framing for some reason that's uh, really important, what you're gonna do is you're probably gonna come in here and you're just gonna create a floor plan using the section plane tool anyway looking at this straight up and down. And so this does have all this extra framing in here, but most likely what you're gonna do is inside your styles, you're gonna have a section fill in here, in here for this to be a wall. So there's really no reason for you to have all of this framing in here. So if you come in here and you model out all of this additional detail for no reason, then you're just gonna make your model big and slow and it's not really going to benefit you. All right, so another thing that you need to be aware of when you're working with SketchUp if you wanna reduce your model size is to be careful about the kind of materials that you're using, specifically when you start importing custom materials. And so what I've done is I've imported two different materials from an online website. So in this case, I've imported materials from the website polygon.com. And so that's just a website where you can download custom images and then you can bring those into SketchUp. And you can see how if I select these, um, I've got notes in here that one is a 3K material. And then if I select the other, the other is an 8K material. And I named these when I first brought these in. But what that means is that means that the file size and the resolution of the images that I've brought in is different between the two images. And so that's one thing that can really slow SketchUp down is if you use a bunch of high resolution textures, um, it really starts struggling to kind of keep up. And so just know that when you zoom out and you just look at these overall, you can't really tell the difference between the two of them. So there's no reason to use super high resolution textures unless you're creating some kind of a rendering. And so if I zoom in, you can see how this is definitely a fairly high resolution image that's being applied in here. But the question is for what benefit, right? So like, for example, if I take a look at this uh, stone Calcutta material that I have in here, the color map is the image that we're using to create this. Well, you can see how inside of here, this is just a very large image. It's an 18 megabyte image that's being tiled across our faces. While over here, if we look at the same thing, we look at this Calcutta or this uh, marble material. So if we look at this marble material and the color map that we have in here, it's still a fairly high quality image, but this one is only in here as a 3K resolution instead of a 5K, meaning it's a much smaller image file. And so what you need to do is you need to just be aware when you start bringing images in as material that you're not using super large images because they're really gonna slow down SketchUp. I will link to an extension from Trimble called Material Resizer that's really good for for reducing the size of materials inside of your SketchUp models. And so the last tip I wanna talk about is talking about using proxy models. And so what using proxy models means is that means that inside of SketchUp, sometimes what happens is you have a model like this tree and you wanna have a whole bunch of different copies of that tree in here. So let's say we have like five or 10 trees or something like that. And this doesn't necessarily, I mean, it will temporarily reduce the size 
easier model, but it more just makes it manageable. And so what we do in a lot of cases is we take a heavy duty model like this one that's a little bit larger, um, and what we'll do is we'll temporarily swap it out for another model. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna go inside of our default tray under components. And if you don't see this and you're on a PC, you go to window, default tray, and you just wanna look for the box name components and make sure that's checked. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we're gonna click this drop down right here and we're gonna find the option for in model. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna temporarily swap these out with a low polygon model. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna right click on this option and you can see how this gives us an option to select instances. Well, when we select instances, what that does is that's gonna select all of the copies of our trees inside of our model. And we can just come in here into like our landscape, for example. Maybe we'll go into the component sampler and we can find something lighter weight like this 3D evergreen tree that's really low poly, and we can just right click on this option and click replace selected. Well, what, we're, what that's gonna do, and the reason this is weird is because the axis in that tree model was messed up, so I'm just gonna double click in here real quick, and we're just gonna reset the axis location because this is gonna swap this out based on that axis. And so we'll double click outside of here, we'll say yes, we wanna update the component axes. We'll do the same thing again, so just end model, select instances, and then we'll go back to our component sampler. And you can just right click on this tree and click replace selected. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna swap out our high poly or our high material weight trees with these lower poly trees inside of our model. And so these proxies can work until you wanna do your final until you want to create your final rendering or view or whatever, you can use these to keep your model kind of lightweight. And then once, once you're ready to go, once you want to create your final image, you would just come in here into your end model. You would find all of these 3D evergreen trees. You would select the instances. And then you would right click and you would replace them with your higher poly or higher material trees. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about these methods for reducing model size. If you have any special tips for reducing that size, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.